So, uh, Daniel Martins here. Thank you so much for being here with me. And today I'm very excited because I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Art Costello. And thank you so much, Art, for having accepted this invitation. And My pleasure. I really hope that your message can cause a very positive impact uh, in the, peop the, the lives of people that are watching here with us. And the reason why I asked Art to be with me in this live was because we are almost beginning uh, 2018 and I think that it's the perfect time for us to make a pause and set our best intentions for this new cycle that is about to begin. And Art Costello knows exactly what you need to master your expectations, okay? Art is an author. This is his book, okay? Expectation Therapy. Uh, mastering your expectations and he's also a life coach and he created the expectation therapy okay so welcome again art and i would like you to tell your story and what motivated you to create the expectation therapy how it was created was through my life events uh when i was a young boy uh, I was pretty much left abandoned and, and to my own devices and had to figure out things on my own. So I used to go to this mountaintop and lay on my back and have a conversation with God in the universe. And uh, after making many trips up that mountain, I heard a voice one day that said, just be patient and your greatness will come. And uh, for me, I, I believed it. I mean, it, it was so trans formative for me because I had never experienced anything like that and I was only nine years old. So when I heard that voice, I, I really believed it. So I started living my life and through my life events, uh, I ended up at 17, uh, figuring out the, the best way to escape my, uh, my reality <laughs> of being alone and lonely was to go in the United States Marine Corps and I ended up in Vietnam and through my experience there, I, I met a, a little girl uh, who I adopted who was in an orphanage and uh, spent uh, time caring for her uh, through a chaplain uh, at the base where uh, was my main compound and I would come and go. And uh, just through life's events uh, in uh, 1968, um, she, uh, I got a letter from the chaplain after I had come back to the States and he said, don't send any more money. Uh, we had found out that the orphanage had been overrun during the Tet Offensive and all the children were lost. And uh, it was really heart wrenching for me, but um, you know, I just believe in, in the plan that has been laid out before me and that everything's a learning experience from it. Mm -hmm. So I, moved on and I went to college and met a, met a girl and was in the entertainment business and she wouldn't marry me because I was in the entertainment business. So I, uh, I walked in one day and just put down my keys and uh, to the car that they had given me, the apartment keys that, for the apartment I had. I had a great job uh, and just moved on and, and asked her to marry me and she married me. And to make a long story short, uh, and we'll advance 35 years after having a business and uh, always believing in this in myself, never worrying about how things would turn out because I always believed that my greatness would come someday. Mm -hmm. And it was just up to me to be patient. So in 2003, uh, after 35 years of marriage, uh, 35 years of owning my own business, um, my wife was told that she had ovarian cancer and um, devastating, uh, not only to her, but to me. And in 2006, uh, she lost her battle and I lost her. And uh, 
she had given me so much throughout her life and uh, we had worked so well together. Uh, it was really a major blow and we had a ranch in, uh, outside of Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I went there and just kind of dishonored her, uh, started drinking, mm -hmm. uh, started not acting uh, myself, believing in myself. You know, my kids were disappointed in me. And after about two and a half years, you know, I almost come, became like a hermit. And uh, it just, uh, I just wasn't acting very well. So in 2006, when she passed, uh, I went and uh, just stayed there. And then what happened was in about 2009, my kids came and said to me, you're dishonoring mom. You're not being, you know, true to yourself or true to her and honoring her. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing I did as a nine year old boy. I got down on my hands and knees, laid on my back and I had a conversation again with God in the universe. And I heard this voice again, same voice that said to me, I've given you all the tools. You just need to apply them. And I woke, I, I got up and was so rejuvenated. I, I actually quit drinking and running loose and around and, and started becoming more social. Mm -hmm. uh, started writing, uh, started dating uh, about a year after that, and met a beautiful lady again who has just been the, joy in my life again. So I've been blessed with two loves and we got married in 2010. And uh, I just kept writing and, and creating mm -hmm. and out of it came expectation therapies because when I reflected back on my life, I realized I've always had the expectation, no matter what I've ever done in my life, I've always had the expectation that it was going to be okay and just the way that God and the universe had it planned for me. Um, and, I, and I just, it, everything just started happening for me. And I just started creating and going back in and using the skills that I had gained throughout my life. Uh, in college, I had studied uh, psychology mm -hmm. and uh, have a degree in psychology and uh, had just started applying a lot of the principles. Mm -hmm. And out of this all came, uh, a protocol, which I call expectation therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's very simple. It's applicable. And when I started life coaching other people and started applying it to other people's lives, we saw incredible results rapidly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it just, the way that it is, that it just really helps people put things together into perspective and it trains them how to use their expectations as they were meant to be used. Mm -hmm. Because since the beginning of time, when God created man or whatever your belief is, uh, whether it was the Big Bang and we were, you know, came out of little fishies in the ocean, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter to me what your belief is. Because I know that the seed that has grown man from day one is his expectations. Mm -hmm. He is expected. It, it, it's his center of creativity. It's the center that moves him and moves us forward. Yeah. And, and that's... And these uh, this expectations that puts us in the creative states, because when events uh, happens to our lives, most people choose to the, the fear expectations and you chose the, the positive, the, the faith expectations. Could you talk a little bit about the difference between and how the, the faith expectation can be draining for people, drain their energy, drain their creativity? Yeah, it's my belief that we look at our expectations through two lenses, faith and fear. If you have faith, you, it doesn't matter if it's a religious faith, could be faith in, in a coach, it could be faith in your parents. The most powerful faith, I believe, is in yourself and in what God has given you. 
the powers that he has given you and how you use them. But once you look at your expectations through the lens of fear, it stops everything. It, it creates hesitation, uh, doubt, and then you don't move forward. You, be, you become in that act of you get paralyzed yeah. in a way to where you don't start doing things. So creating faith-based expectations is really what I think is a choice. We can either choose fear or choose faith. And when I'm working with people and they're and they're very fearful, I one of the tools that I give people is I tell them when you're when you're in that space of fear, reach up to your temple <laughs> and turn the switch off. Turn it off. Perfect. <laughs> Physically turn it off because it keeps you. And then eventually you'll get to the point when you start to, to fear something. You're going to turn it off naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't have to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But to get you started, I always tell people when you, you like get. Trigger. Well, no. Yeah, just you can do it nonchalantly so people don't know what you're doing, but you can go, oh, yeah, you know, just mm -hmm. some kind of move like that. But it really reinforces the choice of going to the positive and, and, and turning fear off. Some people pick it up very easily. Some people it takes work, but it's, it's doable. It can be done. So that's, I encourage people to, to do that, to turn that fear switch off and take time, reflect. You can do it rapidly. You can take time, a long time. It, 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 everybody's an individual. So we all have different ways of dealing with fear. And it's strange because we also spend so too much energy uh, at the fear expectation, you know, because we should uh, uh, focus this energy on the faith, at least because it's more fulfilling. Yes, I mean, you know, faith or positive uh, always creates a more... Uh, more energized it's you know we, we deal in vibrations our our brain waves go out you know when i was a kid laying up on that hill my belief is that i started putting out positive energy and that the butterfly effect has bringing it all back yeah. all back to me it's gone full circle and i'm living my prophecy you know that my greatness is coming i mean i believe what i'm doing now has Tremendous impact on on the people you know that I deal with. Told you, I think yesterday when when you and I were chatting, I told you about. It. I had five emails the day before Christmas that just mm -hmm. made it all worthwhile because uh, one of my cousins who has had a tough life got my book and read it, and, and I hadn't talked to her very much, and she wrote me a, a pre Christmas kind of note saying. Thank you for your book and th th for your positive influence. I'm changing my life. And she's over 70 years old, you know, and I had five of my clients all, you know, all write me really beautiful letters about how this has changed their lives mm -hmm. and how they can, uh, they're living more positively all the way around. And it works for whether you're in business or personally, because your expectations I always tell people, show me one thing that you do that does not involve an expectation. Absolutely. Even from breathing, <laughs> we have the expectation to breathe. You know, everything we do is based on an expectation. And uh, what about the, I'm going to quote uh, uh, you, uh, diminished, ex expect, alias, dimin diminished expectations are like a swap to the heart. I love this quote. And would you tell uh, about the people who say that they prefer to expect not too much and how these diminished expectations can uh, cause so negative impact in their lives? <coughs> Excuse me. Diminished expectations are how we are controlled, not only by ourselves, but by others, by church, religion, uh, 
government, uh, you name it, schools, teachers, uh, salesmen, you know, yeah. when you, when you diminish and let someone else diminish your expectations, you are surrendering control to someone else. Anytime you surrender control to someone else, you are not fulfilling your God-given need purpose in life. I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah. So um, when it's another thing where you have to be aware, awareness is so important and conscious of what, when people tell you not to expect, you have to realize and say to yourself, why is this person trying to control me? Yeah. What is it, you know? And I mean, there are, I call them social expectations, obey the speed limit, you know, the, the, you know, driving things, you know, life things. And those are everyday things that we just have to do. They're social. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to, to the personal expectations that we have, do not surrender to what other people expect. You have to live to your expectations. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes it's more about they wanting, uh, uh, how can I say, company, in the mental address they, they are living. Because, in fact, most of people have tried to pursue their dreams, to, to do what they loved, but somehow here or, or there, something didn't went what they expected to be. And in order to not be alone in this, uh, in this same mental environment they are, they are, they are trying to get other people, you know, to, to make company. They try to draw them in. They try to draw them into their misery. Exactly. <laughs> misery loves company. <laughs> yeah. This is true. So, you know, when, when you find that happening, matter of fact, I, I think one of the most important things that we can do is surround us with like-minded people. Absolutely. And if misery wants company, let that misery all come <laughs> right over and go. Sometimes. Far away sometimes, from me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I mean, when I'm, when I'm counseling people and talking to people and coaching people, you know, I mean, I've had husbands and wives where they're just not good for each other one is really positive the other's not and you know it's a battle and unless somebody is willing to compromise and change mm -hmm. their beliefs their thought patterns which is it's real difficult mm -hmm. you know sometimes they just have to realize you know that it wasn't right you know and 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 make the break but you know it's not something that i like to tell people to do because i i believe you can be because of having high expectations and, and having positive expectations, you can always, always achieve what you want to achieve, yeah. you know, and, and have the patience to do it, have the open-mindedness, the awareness. It's, it's a whole conglomerate of things. The growth that, process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I didn't get like this overnight. It took me a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when I was nine, I would have never dreamt I'm doing what I'm doing now. But I've always been open-minded. I've always pursued whatever I thought was the best path at the time. You, you're always evaluating yourself, you know, am I doing what's right right now? And as long as you believe in your gut and listen to your gut, you know, I, because I think that that's, your intuition is the most powerful tool you have. That and emotional intelligence. If you have the intelligence to read your emotions, understand them, mm -hmm. and know how to react to them. I'm very emotional. I have, a, I have the softest heart. <laughs> and I can, you know, it gets touched very easily. <laughs> it's touched very easily. But I... I also have the uh, intelligence, the emotional intelligence to know when when that's happening and how to react to it and deal with it. Yeah. So it, it's a whole it's a whole series of things that makes it all work. But 
what I always tell people, your expectations are the building block of your life, how your life is going to go, starting with the faith versus the fear. Overcoming your fears is one of the most important things. I think we should be teaching it to children in schools Absolutely. because they're growing up in a world of fear yeah. and, and fear controls and it's why advertisers use it. It's why governments and churches all use it because they want it. Even control. sales, buy it before it, uh, it runs it's out gone. of stock. Yeah. Called fear of loss. Uh, Anytime, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's 90% off today. It's in an hour, it's going to be back to full price. Your fear of loss or buy this car now because tomorrow it'll be gone. Yeah, you know, yeah. those things. Well, my thing is if, If they're going to pressure you into that, you know, then I don't, it's not really for me anyway, because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to end up with what I'm supposed And to have. It's fun that you thought, uh, talk about uh, the pressure. And another point in your book that I found really uh, amazing is when you talk about the difference between the ability-based expectations and the effort-based expectations because I really think that in my opinion one of the foundations of all this society's pressure over people it's because they are always rewarding people based on what they know but not in what they, they really do And they are always trying to compare you to A or B and not uh, rewarding you by your efforts, the, the, the way you, you put all your energy to accomplish something. And what, would, what advice would you give not only to parents, but also for corporations? Because I think that I found this pattern in corporations too about the difference in, in between the, the ability-based expectations and the effort-based and the benefits of adopting the effort-based expectations. You know, at the, when I talk to corp, uh, corp, corporate world in the corporate world and I talk about effort, uh, I bring up the example when I had my, my own company, I based all of my uh, payroll on effort, on production. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do, to put, to put a pay cycle scale, because how do you put, uh, how do you reward someone who answers the telephone and on a pay scale, how do you reward that versus somebody who is filing papers or doing accounting or that? But I, I developed it. And what I found in my company was it created greater teamwork because the girl that was doing the accounting needed the filing done in a certain way. And it worked synergistically mm -hmm. and production went through the roof. I, I did more with my company with less people and they earned more money by basing <laughs> my pay scale on productivity, mm -hmm. uh, all the way from the field people to the office staff. It just, it, it just increases productivity. No one was idle because everybody's always working synergistically and they have to, they all depend on each other to get the thing. If the guys in the field didn't get the paperwork in on time, the girls in the office would say something. So, And they are motivated to work in this team, team spirit. Yes, and when they work that way, everybody meets the production levels that are necessary to get the full scale of the pay. Mm -hmm. And it just worked perfectly. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I consult with companies on how to, how to create that pay structure. Uh, in the school system, uh, we don't reward, and particularly in the U.S., We don't reward on effort. We reward on scholastic ability. It does not. It does not always translate into uh, uh, the most effective teaching methods because 
the child that doesn't have the ability but puts out the effort can bring themselves up. But at the same time, a, per, a child that has very little ability and puts out lots of effort can, can even the skills. But if the ability is, is never, never achieved, that person can, can also slide down, but gets rewarded at a better, yeah, it, it's, it's a natural uh, ability. It resonated a lot with this topic because I've never been good at maths, you know, mathematics, <laughs> uh, numbers. I've never welcome, been good. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, people seem not to be interested in, in what you do so well that could like uh, I'm, I just like to say that there are people that are very good in mathematics, okay, and that can be very good in other subjects, in other like arts, you know, uh, things more more emotional, but not not in the exact uh, subjects. And it's fun because they, they simply shut the, their eyes off for the other abilities you have or the efforts you put in everything because they want you to have that specific grades in your uh, report card. And I call it, it's the academic elitist because they, they have the standard and because they were able to, to master it, uh, they expect everyone else to do it. And I think we lose a lot of really talented people in, in, in all fields because of not being able to, to do calculus and geometry and do all the, that. I mean, in psychology in the U.S., we call uh, statistics. In psychology, the weeder class, it, it weeds out who's going to move on and who isn't because advanced statistics and statistics are, are the toughest thing but unless you're a researcher you really don't use them yeah. you know and you know I, you're getting started on, on the academic part of it it's it, it really does it's it, it's really not fair yeah. to people it does not address the talents of the individual it just groups everybody together and assumes that, that they but it has they, to be the same in the same they, level you yeah. know and I I, uh, I get a lot of, of grief uh, here um, you know I just spoke at Harvard and uh, one of the things um, that I was asked was why don't you have a PhD you know why don't you have a PhD uh, you know it wasn't what I, I wanted to live and then in the same token, the same people would tell me a, a half hour after talking to me, you know, one of the greatest things I see in you, Art, is that I've researched what you're talking about, but you've lived it. You've lived this. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes expectation therapy so effective. It comes out of m my life. I know what I've done, and I know the techniques. Experience, experience. Yeah. yeah, I've experienced it, and I've lived it, and I know it, and I know that it can work for other people if they put in the effort to do it. Yeah. And that's what makes it so powerful. Yeah. Uh, it's not complicated. It's this is not a complicated system. You know. Yeah. It's just effective. And effectiveness is what we need now. Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's so many people hurting in this world that don't need to be hurting. And it breaks my heart, you know, because I know that they can, that we have the capability to change them and they have the capability to change themselves mm -hmm. if they only knew how. Yeah, you know? absolutely. That's, that's the power of it. Yeah. And... What about the uh, having the attitude of the positive expectation? How can they make an outstanding impact of some in someone's life? What what would you tell? How how can can someone uh, be more effective on, on believing more, having more faith? 
once you start to have positive expectations, it is almost contagious. I have seen it in families that are extremely negative, you know, or one person in the family, the husband could be negative or the wife could be negative and it affects the whole family. Yeah. Once you start taking positive actions and steps, it gets contagious and all of a sudden the whole milieu of the family changes, the whole, everything changes. And once that change starts occurring, it gets reinforced with other positive actions and it just mushrooms. So positive expectations are the key, are the key to, to changing it. And you just do it in small incremental steps. You start daily affirmations, uh, doing those little positive steps. Um, it could be as simple as, you know what, I think one of the most powerful things that I learned when in the Marine Corps, because when I was young, I was very dis undisciplined because my, I didn't have anybody to tell me how to do anything. I had to figure out everything on my own. I mean, from, from study habits to how to kiss a girl or <laughs> no one ever told me anything. So I had to figure out everything. So taking those small steps becomes really, really important. When I was in the Marine Corps, one of the first things they teach you in the Marine Corps about discipline is make your bed every morning. <laughs> it's, it's so simple. We all can do it. Most people don't. Do you know I the first thing that I do when I get out of bed every single morning for the past 50 years is make my bed. <laughs> I just start taking those positive steps. Then my second is I do my daily reading. I do I, I get up about four four thirty in the morning, so I get up first thing make my bed. Second thing is I do some daily reading, something mm -hmm. that I want to read for that day, something positive, yeah. and I establish that some affirmations, uh, make a, a, a good breakfast. I, I just people say it's some people say it's too uh, ritualistic, it's too regimented for them, but the but the part of it is. When you become that regimented in those simple little tasks, they're positive and you know you start the morning by accomplishing things. Okay. You know, when you lay in bed and you crawl out of bed and you hate to go to work and you drag yourself to the shower and you don't make yourself breakfast, you don't make your bed and you go to work, you're, you're, you've fallen behind, you know. You, you will get in a spiral, a negative spiral. You know. Yep, this in the, just like positive, positive rises and, right. and creates positive energy. Negative just brings you down, you know. And, and, and it's so important because uh, people, most people, don't have the the positive habits early in the morning. And if they just know that, they just knew that a, a positive thought at for, uh, the the first thing you do. Why, when you wake up, should change the, the your energy, your vibration for the rest of the day. It they, does. It, it really does. It really does. It's starting the day with a, a positive mind, with positive habits. I, I like to read in the morning too. I love to read in the morning because I'm still uh, fresh and things come into my mind easily, e e easily. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I get some lost in English, but okay. And this, this uh, pose, just little things that people should experience more in the morning before they, they get their minds all full of negative thoughts because they don't like their work, they and etc. This, these rituals are little things, but they are very, very important for our lives. I'll tell you about my shower epiphanies. When I when I shower, because uh, it's about usually the third or fourth thing that I do in the morning, I shower. It it for me it is very cleansing. I'm a I love water. I mean I love boats. I love you know sailing and power boats and I love anything to do with the water. But when I start showering, I I have a little uh, chalkboard that we put in the, in the shower that you can write on. 
because I have all these thoughts that rush into my head when I shower and I just jot them down because I, by the time I get out of the shower, I, I forgot them if I don't write them down. Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, it's very cleansing to get in a shower. You know, I used to think it was because in Vietnam, I didn't get to shower very often and it was very hot and sticky and I hated being dirty. But now, now I've realized that what the water does to you is it just cleanses. It. It's a, it's a form of cleansing and it opens up the mind and your, I have some of my best thoughts in the shower. I mean, really positive, inspirational quotes come out of me, all kinds of, of positiveness. So, you know, simple things like taking showers, you know, um, and I mean, it, take the chance to, to register the, the thoughts, the moment. You're a, you know, it's one of the things that I always tell people when we're starting with expectation therapy is one of the requirements is I want them to go to some place that is the most settling, calming place and do some introspective work within yourself. What, what do I want to accomplish? What do I want to do? What do I look, what does my life look like? What does it look like with this person? What does it look like with me? And just really do some really deep introspective work. That's the first step of expectation therapy is, is you've got to know yourself. You've got to know where you're going, what you want, and you have to be so positive of it that that's what it is that you're willing to take the steps to get it, to do it. And, and develop the, the self-love, love that it's the most important feeling we have to, to have about ourselves. People are so taught to love the other people and care about the other people. And we are forgetting that we must be well first before yeah. we can take care of others. Yeah, you've got to take care of yourself. I mean... You can't help and You know, a lot of people try. A lot of people think that they're really helping others when they're not, you know, they're, because they haven't helped themselves first, you know. And you cannot give what you don't have. Yeah, you can't. You just can't do it. You know, it's, it, and some people fall into the negative of, of criticizing others to make themselves feel good when really they need to be looking inside themselves and healing themselves and doing that. So a lot of expectation therapy is really a lot about self-healing, self-love, self-caring, taking care of yourself, knowing what you want. And it once you start doing those things, your life starts changing yeah. for the better. It really, really does. And then you can do the things that really bring your passion to, to the forefront. Um, your creativity, uh, all of that rises when you're healthy with yourself and your own expectations and, and know where to go. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, and of course, your environment will uh, follow this improvement. Yeah, yeah it's, it affects the whole world yeah. because you start, you know, one, one positive vibration out of the human mind can can really start a ripple effect that changes the world which is the butterfly effect you know i do believe in this i really do believe in the intention we put in our work and, and everything we do if we put our best intention i really really believe that other people will receive the, this intention and we are going to receive it back also and i think that people should think more about this this impact we, we can do in in, uh, in the world no? i'm living proof of it I believe. I'm, li I'm living proof i mean you know what i believe what i put out into the world at nine years old asking asking god what was going to become of me what was going to happen and listening and and, listen and believing and, and having a belief system mm -hmm. i had nothing else to grasp onto and that was what I grasped onto, believing in that voice. And it really was my gut just telling me that everything was going to be okay. Uh, and that I just had to figure out, you know, how, how to do the daily deeds of it, you know, to get there. So it was really a, 
a, a tremendous experience. It was a blessing, you know, to get that because it, it's really. It's a blessing that you knew how to listen to this voice. Because it's not that not uh, other people don't, uh, this voice don't speak to them. It speaks, but they don't listen, but you listen it. I think that I listened because I really needed to listen. I knew somehow I had the intuitiveness to, 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 hear, to listen to it and believe it and understand it. Uh, and I believe you're right. You know, everybody has that voice inside of them. Most people suppress it because they don't want to. They don't want to surrender to it because you really have to surrender to that voice. Once your in intuition works, but you know it's worked all my life. You know when I was in Vietnam, I was, I just had an intuitiveness about what to do when and not to do, what not to do and not where to move and doing the things that sound uh, sounded like uh, right to you. Yeah, I think it creates, when, when you listen to your intuitiveness, it creates a mindfulness around you that uh, brings an awareness and an openness that uh, is really rewarding, you know, and I talk about that in the book, you know, yeah. about mindfulness and openness. It's essential. If, yeah. if you don't start listening to your own body, We work, our bodies, our minds, and our spirits work synergistically. Mm -hmm. They are just one ball of energy, and we need to treat it that way. You can't put out your spiritual side and just go to the gym and work on your physical side. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be lacking. It's, it's about being the whole the whole being. It's about being Absolutely. all, the, you know, to take a thing from the U.S. Army, be all, all you can be, you know, and uh, that's what it's about, you know, is your body, your mind, and your soul all oh, work together. Synchronicity. Synchronicity, there's the word. It is, it's, it's a powerful tool, and that's what people need to start working on, but you've got to have the foundation, yeah. and that's where expectations come in, because it is the foundation, it was the seed that, that was planted in us as, as when we were created and we've just grown it. You know, I, I often think about the early uh, man, cavemen and, you know, early man, Nathan, Na, Na, Neanderthal, I was trying to remember it, Neanderthal man, how did they ever create the wheel and fire and, uh, know what food to kill. They had the expectation to eat. I mean, it's a, it's an organic expectation that we have is to, to fill our bellies with food, you know? So how did they know what to eat? You know, they had the expectation of being able to capture berries off of bushes to start. And then, they, you know, to, you know, kill a ground squirrel or kill a squirrel or whatever it was to get meat and protein and, mm -hmm. and all that. But we, we've just grown over. And that's what's so exciting to me because our expectations are, are so powerful and we're seeing them now, but yet society is trying to tell us not to expect from Shakespeare to uh, Kali, actresses and everything oh don't expect this and don't expect that when we should be doing the exact opposite we should be expecting more of ourselves now than ever it will blow us out in there do you think that bill gates didn't expect he didn't start building a computer or building personal building microsoft with the intent to not have or without the expectation of having fulfilled a purpose, you know, it, it, it's how our purpose gets fulfilled is through our expectations mm -hmm. and how much we can water them to grow them. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense. We, mm -hmm. we have a lot of, um, a lot of people that have bought into the, the idea that our expectations don't matter. Mm -hmm. And all that was is, is others trying to control them. Because once you can control somebody's expectations, you control that person. 
And that's why schools do it. That's why churches do it. That's why government does it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I'm kind of a rebel in that sense that mm -hmm. the whole purpose of expectation therapy is to teach people to think, mm -hmm. think on their own, their thoughts. I don't want to control their thoughts. No, I want them to, to be to awakened, think, to, to, to be who they were meant to be, yeah. because there's a greatness that lies within every one of us. Yeah. We just have to explore it, you know, we just have to let it come out and we expect it to come out. I expect it to come out. Yeah. And once you do that, it becomes so fulfilling. I am so much happier now in my life than I have ever been before. And I've had money before. I've had things before. I've had skills before that I've had. But, but I am so happy right now because I'm being so creative yeah. and having an impact on other people's lives. And I find it so rewarding, you know, everything else really to me doesn't matter anymore other than just fulfilling the purpose that I believe was waiting for me ever since I'm nine years old and laid on that hill. I'm living it now, yeah. you know, cool. almost 77, 61 years later. Yeah, you know, it's so powerful. Well, you know, it is what it is, and no, you know, I'm, this is I'm, beautiful because you you are uh, through your experience now you are uh, able to help people because you you didn't uh, you were able to transform your your pain your painful moments in lessons and you grew stronger through your experience and now you are helping people to overcome their own uh, problems uh, and, and this this is beautiful because you were able to transform your life in, into a, a tool of, of God to to find it a, a better life for the people and I think that it's a purpose uh, you were meant to be and you realize it that yeah, I think one of the one of the important things too is that I've never let anything defeat me. You know, nothing gets me down. You know why and how I do that? Mm -hmm. I look at everything that happens to me, whether it be positive or negative, as a learning experience. Absolutely. Everything that happens to me is meant to teach me a lesson. And really, I get more upset when something happens and I don't look at it as a learning I get upset with myself and I and it's really powerful when you take everything as a learning experience because it takes it takes what that trying uh, to teach me it, yeah exactly and it takes that thing away of oh the woe is me you know why did this happen I don't ever say to God, God why did this happen oh. I say what did I learn? Thank you, God, for teaching me what something. What did I new. learn from this? Yeah. Yeah, I just I just had a client that uh, was going through a divorce, and she was saying, you know, I I'm so heartbroken because I, you know, I lost the love of my life. He went and with someone else and wanted didn't want me anymore. And I said, I asked her. I said, you know, you were married for 20, 20 years. What did you learn? What did you gain? And she started telling me everything that was good. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Look for those qualities in your next love, you know, and learn from the things that you disliked or didn't want out of your past bout. But those good qualities, keep those and build upon those and learn from the, the past qualities that that you didn't want mm -hmm. and it was funny how you could see in her eye all of a sudden she started realizing it's all oh, going to be okay I'm, if i use it as a learning experience so if we look at our 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 joys i mean because we learn from our joys also okay. and we look from our our tragedies for lack of a better word and we look at them all, everything that happens to us is a learning experience, yeah. creating a bigger, better me to go out and, and be in the world. Yeah. We'll be fine, you know? And You'll be fine. 
you we are always uh, if we are uh, open at mind to see the, the these lessons we are getting we are able to grow stronger and to to be a, a, a better person after that and it's so much better feeling like a better person than like a person being drawn down a funnel into the yeah. gutter somewhere, you know, because that's what will happen. You know, if you let the negatives build up, I actually believe the first step to depression is, is unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. And if you learn to master your expectations, you'll never be depressed. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because you'll learn to use them. You'll learn that there's a purpose in, in everything. There's a purpose in everything. I, I agree so much with it. And before we leave, Art, uh, I would like to ask you if you have any last piece of advice or thoughts to uh, share with your with our audience. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give to people is um, don't live up to the try to live up to the expectations of others. Absolutely. But learn what your expectations are. I call them core expectations and live to your core expectations, what you want for yourself, and it will change your, the way your life goes. You will start living and everyone will see it around you and everything will start to turn positive. Yeah, it's, it's just like the our way. inner compass. Yeah. It is, our expectations are our inner compass. Yeah. I mean, uh, back to the same old thing. Tell me one thing that we do that doesn't go, we have an expectation attached to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. everything we do from breathing to to writing to to loving, you know, I mean, it's all based in expectation. Mm -hmm. So if we learn how to master them and handle them. You've got the you've got one step ahead of everybody else. Yeah. yeah. And it's the first step to happiness. True happiness. Absolute true happiness. Mm -hmm. Us, um, Art, uh, and where can people find you and also buy your book? It's on Amazon. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon under uh, Mastering Art Expectation Therapy, Mastering Your Expectations. Uh, my website is uh, https colon forward slash forward slash expectation therapy. Uh, we are launching uh, sometime after the first of the year an e-learning course that's going to be dynamite mm -hmm. that will walk you through all the steps of expectation therapy. It, uh, it's, the e-learning course is really, really going to be neat. It's uh, audio, video. Uh, you can journal in it right in the course. Uh, it's, it's really powerful. <laughs> it's going to be great. Oh, so, so uh, fun for you. Yeah, we've worked on this for the past probably six months as the learning course. I have an online course on there right now. We're going to take it down uh, real quick because the e-learning course is mm -hmm. this close to, to being done. I just have to, uh, we're doing some uh, recording for uh, uh, the audio portion of it. But it, it's it's powerful. It's a powerful course. So, so it'll be available for everybody to to see and and that and do and get the book because mm -hmm. the book will take you through a lot of the steps and uh, and help you. So uh, okay, I yeah. will also uh, write here in the description box about your contacts so they can uh, uh, contact you if, if they want. And once again, I would like to thank you so much for being here with me. And I really, really, really hope that your message. Can be uh, can can cause massive impact in someone's life, and that we can start 2018 with positive expectations and conquer our dreams. You no, know? and thank you so much again for for this. Thank you for having me, and and I'm always here for you. Anybody, um, you know, just contact me through my website, Art uh, Art at Expectation Therapy. And uh, I appreciate you and, and love helping people. So that's what, I'm, that's what my purpose in life is. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You.